Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest on the line this morning. Uh, we have Memphis DA candidate Steve Mulroy. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to be here. Steve, what's up? You got a big election in a few days, huh? Oh, boy, a big one. Big one. Again, a lot of national attention. <laughs> now, now, talk to us why you should be the DA in Memphis, man. Well, I, I appreciate the opportunity to answer that question. Thanks a lot. Um, we've got a crying need for criminal justice reform in this county. Um, we've got uh, a lot of problems with racial discrimination in our criminal justice system. The uh, U.S. Department of Justice's Civil Rights Division, my old employer, has proved that we've got that kind of problem. Um, we just have way too many people um, in jail, young African-American people in jail for you know months, years at a time, waiting for uh, a trial, haven't been convicted of any crime. Um, and we've got a DA basically who doesn't recognize the need for reform and change and ending the racial discrimination that's infecting our entire system. Meanwhile, she's not keeping us safe because crime has been out of control. Since she took over, crime has been, you know, just skyrocketing over the last decade. We're now worst in the country for violent crime. And I, I think what we need to do is convince uh, the, the system that, you know, you can have safety and you can have justice. In fact, the two of them work together. And uh, that's something that I've been trying to, to do because we can bring reform and change to a system that really desperately needs it. All right. Now, what I was going to ask, what is your stance on the abortion laws? They said when uh, Roe versus Wade was overturned, it had a 30 day trigger law went into effect in Tennessee that limited the uh, ability to get a legal abortion. So what is your stance on it? Yeah, well, I've already publicly said from the beginning that as a policy matter, I don't think the criminal justice system is the right thing to use on matters of reproductive choice. And so as a result, those kinds of prosecutions would be an extremely low priority for me. Now, there's this law in Tennessee that says it's if the DA says categorically, I will never prosecute X, then the state can appoint an independent prosecutor, basically take jurisdiction over that X away from the DA. So I haven't said that. My opponent, the incumbent, uses that law as an excuse to refuse to answer the question. But I think we all know that she and I would treat these things very differently because for a couple of years back in 2014 to 2016, Tennessee had this really harsh fetal assault law, and she used it aggressively to go after women if there was any indication that they had substance abuse issues while they were pregnant. The result was a public health disaster. Pregnant women stopped going to get medical care because they were afraid they were going to get prosecuted by this person. And uh, as a result, uh, the Republican conservative legislature ended the law because it was too extreme even for them. Um, and she actually had been pushing to continue the law. So I think people in Memphis and Shelby County know that she and I would handle that matter of abortion very, very differently. Well, you know, I, I was reading that Shelby County is 57 percent black, but they've never had a Democratic DA. Why, why do you think that is? You know, it's a it's a it's a combination of things. You have these Republican DAs who resign in the middle of the term and then a Republican governor appoints them to serve out the remainder of the term, and then they have the advantage of incumbency when it's time to get reelected. Um, but, you know, not only is it 55% or the, thereabouts uh, African-American, the DA's office itself has about 85% white prosecutors going after 90% black defendants in a system in which the victims are 90% black as well. And I think that's just another illustration of why we need somebody who's going to proactively go in there and try to root out the racial discrimination in the system and bring some change. You know, another thing that disturbed me about what I saw in Memphis, man, they said uh, as of July 21st, the current Memphis DA is seeking to try a 15 year old charged into the death of a Memphis pastor as an adult. And then I read that out of the 89 kids they sent to adult court, 88 were black. So it's a two part question. What are your thoughts on trying teenagers as adults? And how do you plan on attacking these these uh, racial issues in the county? Right. So it's an excellent question. We do this question of adult transfer, taking young children and sending them off to adult prison. We do more of that in one county alone here in Shelby County than the rest of Tennessee combined. Ninety five percent of them are black. And that's true every year for the last decade. There was a federal court appointed independent monitor that took a look at the way that prosecutor's office dealt with this issue of adult transfer and called it, quote, 
a toxic combination for African-American youth. In other words, discriminatory practices that have not yet been uh, addressed. Now, there are these rare cases, I think, in extreme cases, where maybe somebody does need to be transferred to adult court, but it should be the rare exception. It should be the last resort, not a first instinct, because the data shows that when you do that, not only are those children at greater risk of sexual assault and uh, suicide in the adult prison, but they're actually more likely to come out and reoffend when they're eventually let out. So we're essentially sending them off to crime college. It's not keeping us safer. It's not helping the victims. It's just making the matter worse. Um, and as to the uh, second part of the question, what I would do? Well, I would say that there wouldn't be a petition filed by the prosecutor's office for adult transfer unless it was signed off personally by me or high-ranking supervisor. Um, and as a result, um, you know, we would reduce the number of those and we try to make sure that the, the racial disparities were addressed. You know, you mentioned that one particular case of the pastor. The other case, just really quick, I wanted to mention to you is, you know, we had a beloved rapper named Young Dolph who was tragically killed um, not too long ago. And it hasn't really been given enough attention that the person who eventually killed that uh, rapper, Young Dolph, was let out on probation in kind of a sweetheart deal. The, basically, the DA's office took a violation of probation after this person had shot up a bowling alley and wounded three people um, and punted off to the feds and decided not to do it consecutively with the feds, basically a sweetheart deal, allowing that person to be out on the street in order to kill young Dolph. Now, everybody makes mistakes and you never know in advance who is gonna be dangerous, I understand that. But for a prosecutor who you know spends all her time talking about how she's tough, she's tough, she's tough on crime and her opponent's soft on crime, it's, I think, kind of disturbing that when it comes to you know uh, this kind of situation, shooting up people in an African-American community in a bowling alley, She's not really all that tough. And I, I think that's something that uh, the voters need to know as well. Now, what about the other men? Do we have any other updates? I know because you're from Memphis and we're, we're looking from, from the other side. Are there any other updates with the Young Dolph case? Uh, no, not, not that I know of. Um, you know, this, this person, is it's still under, um, you know, it's still pending right now. Got gotcha. you. Now, I was going to ask, you know, in Memphis, I know crime is high. So what are your plans to try to make sure that some of those people, like you say, stay off those streets and people that do go to jail get rehabilitated and not just, you know, back to what they have to do? Right. So, well, you know, we need to be tough on violent crime because violent crime is out of control. And I think that, you know, we spend far too much time on things like marijuana possession and being laid on fines and fees and going after protesters here in Shelby County and not enough time. Um, you know, not enough time uh, focusing on, you know, carjackings and, and, you know, domestic assaults and things like that that are out of control here in Shelby County. But when it comes to nonviolent crime, I think we need to uh, be, you know, more robustly exploring alternatives to state prison, you know, a community service, drug treatment, you know, mental health treatment is a big thing. You know, we have a lot of people in our system with mental health issues, and we need to make sure that we're addressing them with treatments, you know, clinical treatments, and the answer is not to lock them up all the time. Um, and I think that's something that we can be more proactive about if we have the right person um, at the helm in the DA's office. What, what, other, what other changes do you hope to make in the DA's office, Steve? Well, you know, for one thing I want to do is um, fix our broken bail system. We have far too many people who are languishing behind bars for months, years at a time, haven't been convicted of a crime, waiting for their day in court. And the only reason they're there is that they can't afford cash bail. So you have two different people charged with the same crime, same criminal background. One has some money, one doesn't. One of them is you know, waiting there for 18 months, 24 months or, or more, disrupting their lives, their job, their career, their families. The other one is out waiting trial. And a large percentage of those people, <coughs> excuse me, will ultimately be, you know, the case will be resolved without a conviction. So there are innocent people here who you know, are being harmed by this. And I think one of the things that we can do is we can create a system where we have guidelines over the prosecutors. They, except for very serious violent offenses, the presumption would be release pending trial, absent specific credible evidence that that particular defendant is either a danger to the community 
or a flight risk. That actually is what Tennessee law provides. We haven't been doing it. It's been tried in other cities like uh, New Orleans and DC for years. It has not resulted in an increase in crime, um, but it has resulted in greater fairness. All right, well, good luck. And people get out there and vote. Memphis DA, Steve Mulroy, we appreciate you for joining us. This fourth is the election, right? Voting is this Thursday, so I hope everyone in Shelby County or hears my voice will go out and vote. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, take care. Thank you.